Hello, my name is Trina. I'm a medical cannabis patient. I partake of cannabis on a regular basis for my PTSD, arthritis in both my knees and ankles, social anxiety, and a few other conditions you can learn more about by watching the previous shows on this channel. This is the Productive Cannabis Connoisseur, a channel dedicated to medical cannabis patients and adults 21 and over. <laughs> So today I'm a little giggly. Um, I've been smoking the lavender kush, which is uh, scrum deliumptious. Today I want to talk to you about cannabis and spirituality, specifically about uh, Christmas and its connection to uh, the amanita mushroom. I looked up a bunch of. Uh, I looked up a bunch. Not a bunch. I just went to this one website called Live Science, and um, or Live Science, I should say, or Live Science. But they talked about uh, all the reasons why uh, the Amanita mushroom is connected with Santa Claus and Christmas. But before we get into that, <laughs> I'm going to be smoking in my bong with some lavender kush. I'll show you it. Got my jar here. Got some lavender kush here. And I even looked it up on Leafly and also on a new uh, site that I found called Cannabis Now. So yeah, so I'm going to hold this up as I read what Cannabis Now says about Lavender Kush. So, comprised of super skunk, big skunk, Korean and Afghani Hawaiian, Hawaiian, Lavender Kush is a deep indica strain that manages to put you under without without you hanging you without hanging you over. <laughs> An anesthetically very beautiful strain, Lavender Kush meanders from light greens to pastel purples that can become quite dark in cold temperatures, all the while maintaining impressive trichome content that give this strain a fabulously frosty color. You don't see that on this one. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> it's because it's been cured, guys, and it shrinks. The, uh, the smell, Lavender Kush smells like light and fruity with a cushy bottom end. The dry hit, tucking it before lighting it, treats your taste buds to a flow of delight lurking underneath the loud, cushy overtones. The flavor dank, lightly sweet, lavender kush tastes very much as it smells, deep and dank with a hint of faintly fruity flowers in the aftertaste. The high, lavender kush offers a classic indica body high that makes you relentlessly relax Best not to make ambitious plans before partaking of this brain scrambling, lazy making delight. The slow build up of the lavender kush bellies its powerful punch. It can knock you flat and it doesn't take much to get there. Avoid activities that require any mental focus and you'll feel free and you'll free yourself to feel a comforting euphoria. Gently relaxing like the plant it's named for. Lavender kush, kush is perfect for a relaxing soak in the hot tub before bed. And it will completely, whoops, I sink, sink down there. It will completely delete any thoughts you had prior. Make it, making it an ideal choice if you're feeling escapist. Once this kush has run its course, it leaves the system ever so gently. With no mental fogginess to cloud the memory of how good that just felt. The word lavender kush is not for those times you need to get things done while you're high. From a recreational standpoint, it's best reserved for the end of the long work day. Right before bed, from a medical perspective, it's good for pain relief and it's obviously excellent for insomnia. With its commercially friendly flowering time of eight to nine weeks, lavender kush shouldn't be hard to come by. This is good because it's definitely worth keeping on hand for that, those late night bedside bong hits. So, what do I think about that review of it? I don't agree, agree with all of it because, like I told you guys, when I smoke cannabis, I smoke strains that are high in indica or purely indica. So that means I can smoke a hybrid and the hybrid will be more indica. Now, I only have one strain that I smoke that is higher on the indica, I mean the sativa level. And that would be headband. So, I was you've seen me smoke it on here, but I noticed that it's like coffee to me, the effects of it. And I don't drink coffee anymore. <laughs> but I'll only I will only smoke so much of it. So then it won't cause anxiety. Like people, people have left comments on my videos here, 
talking about how they have anxiety from cannabis. And I think it could be the strain that they've tried. It could be the fact that they had an edible for the first time that they tried cannabis. Um, edibles can be very, very strong. And if you're not used to the, the, excessive, the excessive amount of THC, it can uh, be very... Um, it can be very different for your body and you're not used to it, is what I'm saying. So anyway, enough talking. Let's smoke. Cheers. <coughs> I, don't, I don't agree with the lazy part of it or not being able to focus because... I'm really able to focus. I don't feel like I want to lay down and go to sleep forever. Um, I do see how it could be good, great for insomniacs. Um, I think that you have to like try whatever works for you. For me, I've said many times that I like the indica because it doesn't make me uh, doesn't make me feel flighty or too anxiety panic ridden. So anyway, enough of the cannabis strain reviews. Oh yeah, I did want to say Leaf Fly strain info was uh, that if you want to be able to tell Lavender Kush from all the others, other strains, it has a dark purple coloration at the ends of its leaves. So obviously you don't see the ends of these leaves on this because this has been, it's been trimmed, it's been uh, cured. But it does have that smell, that that aroma, that florally fragrance that I love so much. And it's very, very dense and pleasant. It's beautiful. So yeah, that's pretty much all they're talking about on uh, Leaf Fly. That's why I refer to cannabis now. So anyway, this is what I want to share with you. Something I uh, copied online. And I've also seen a documentary referring to uh, Santa Claus and the Magic Mushroom. I always felt like Santa Claus, uh, well, when I was a kid, I would get excited, of course, like a lot of kids would, because you're going to get presents, and whether it's from some white guy with a red suit and hat on and black boots and reindeer with a red shining nose, I was always happy and expecting something big. That didn't always happen, so. <laughs> yeah, you know, when you grow up poor, you have a different perspective on Christmas, that's for sure. So I wanted to search out and find out more about Christmas, and um, and I I felt like I needed to tell people that because people would ask me, why don't you uh, feel like you want to celebrate Christmas? Because it feels like a Hallmark holiday. It seems superficial. Uh, it seems like it's 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 been turned into such a thing where uh, people that don't have a lot of funds, currency to keep up with all the latest stuff, gadgets and things, are meant to feel inadequate. It seems like that's purposely done. And that's my perspective, being someone from this end of the spectrum <laughs> of life. So yeah, I want to read to you, it's, it's this thing called Eight Ways Magic Mushrooms Explain Santa Story. So, get ready, you might want to smoke through this, it might be very fascinating. There's also that, like I told you, that documentary, and. I like you can always look up Santa Claus and the magic mushroom on YouTube. And I have three books. <laughs> and I have three books on magic mushrooms that I'd like to share with you um, after I read these eight ways magic mushrooms explain Santa's story. So. Let's get into it. Number one, Arctic shamans gave out mushrooms on the winter solstice. According to the theory, the legend of Santa derives from shamans in the Siberian and Arctic regions who dropped into locals teepee-like homes with a bag, of, bag full of hallucinogenic mushrooms as presents in late December. As the story goes, I blow my nose, sorry. <laughs> Alright, I don't want to have anything hanging on my nose while I'm reading to you. <laughs> According to the theory, the legend of Santa derives from shamans in the Siberian and Arctic regions 
who dropped into local teepee-like homes with a bag full of hallucinogenic mushrooms as presents in late December. As the story goes, up until a few hundred years ago, these practicing shamans or priests connected to the older traditions would collect Amanita muscaria, the holy mushroom, dry them, and then give them as gifts on the winter solstice. Because snow is usually blocking doors, there was an opening in the roof through which people entered and exited, thus the chimney story. Sounds familiar, huh? Number two, mushrooms, like gifts, are found beneath pine trees. The Amanita muscaria, which is deep red with white flakes. Mm -hmm. That's just one of the symbolic connections between the Amanita muscaria mushroom and the iconograph iconography of Christmas. According to, the several, to several historians and ethnomycologists, or people who study fungi's influence on human societies. <clears throat> of course, not all scientists agree that the Santa story is tied to a hallucinogen. In his book, Mushrooms and Mankind, the late author James Arthur points out that Amanita muscaria, also known as fly agarit, lives throughout the northern hemisphere under conifers and birch trees, with which the fungi, which are deep red with white flecks, have a symbiotic relationship. This partially explains the practice of the Christmas tree and the placement of bright red and white presents underneath it, which look like Amanita mushrooms. <laughs> yeah, do you see that, man? It is, uh, it is a different perspective, isn't it? If you've never heard of that perspective. But I'm sure a few of you guys have. <coughs> Look, I'm still focused. <laughs> Lavender Kush. It doesn't make you unfocused. Not me, at least. Maybe a little bit more slowed down. <laughs> So, here we go. Why do people br bring pine trees into their houses at the winter solstice? Placing brightly colored red and white packages under their boughs as gifts to show their love for each other. It is because underneath the pine bough is the exact location where one would find this most sacred substance, the Amanita muscaria, in the wild. Note, do not eat mushrooms as they can be poisonous. I know you guys out there listening to me aren't going to like go out and just buy, go picking any old mushroom without doing your research, so I'm not worried about you guys. <laughs> so number three, reindeer were shaman spirit animals. Reindeer are common in Siberia <coughs> <coughs> and northern Europe and seek out these hallucinogenic fungi. And as the areas human inhabitants have also been known to do, Donald Pfister, a Harvard University biologist who studies fungi, suggests that Siberian tribesmen who ingest fly, fly argaret, that's the other word for, if you didn't know, the mushroom, may have hallucinated that the grazing reindeer were flying. At first glance, one thinks it's ridiculous, but it's not, said Carl Ruck, a professor of classics at Boston University, however heard Whoever heard of reindeer flying? I think it's becoming general knowledge that Santa is taking a trip with his reindeer. <laughs> That's great, huh? Were Santa and his reindeer on a magic mushroom-induced trip? <laughs> Amongst the Siberian shamans, you have an animal spirit you can journey with in your vision quest, Rock continued. And reindeer are common and familiar to people in Eastern Europe. I mean, Eastern Siberia. Shamans dressed like Santa Claus. These shamans also have a tradition of dressing up like the mushroom. They dress up in red suits with white spots, Ruck said. That's number four. So number five is mushrooms abound in Christmas iconography. Iconography. I was saying iconography. <laughs> iconography. Tree ornaments shaped like Amanita mushrooms and other depictions of the fungi are also prevalent in Christmas decorations throughout the world. 
particularly in Scandinavia and Northern Europe. Pfister pointed out, that said, okay, let me get this. <laughs> this is really, uh, if you're interested in substances that awaken uh, certain parts of yourself that you never knew existed. I mean, that's how I see uh, psychedelics. It kind of like opens your mind to a world that's always been there, but you just weren't aware of. So anyway... So mushrooms abound in Christmas iconogra iconography. <laughs> Tree ornaments shaped like amanita mushrooms and other depictions of the fungi are also prevalent in Christmas decorations throughout the world, particularly in Scandinavia and Northern Europe. That said, Pfister made it clear that the connection between modern-day Christmas and the ancestral practice of eating mushrooms is a coincidence, and he doesn't know about the, any direct link. <laughs> Everybody has their own way of explaining things, that's for sure. Rudolph's nose is number six. Rudolph's nose resembles a bright red mushroom. Ruck points to Rudolph as another example of the mushroom imagery resurfacing. His nose looks exactly like a red mushroom. It's amazing that a reindeer with a red mushroom nose is at the head, leading the others, isn't it? Many of these traditions were merged or projected upon St. Nicholas, a 4th century saint known for, known for his generosity as the story goes. There is little debate about the consumption of mushrooms by Arctic and Siberian tribespeople and shamans, but the connection of Christmas traditions is more tenuous or mysterious. Number 7. A visit from St. Nicholas may have borrowed from shaman rituals. Many of the modern details of the modern American Santa Claus came from the 1823 poem, A Visit from St. Nicholas, which later became famous as Twas the Night Before Christmas, which you guys all know, I'm sure. The poem is credited to Clement Clark Moore, an aristocratic ac academic who lived in New York City. The origins of Moore's vision are unclear, although Arthur, Rush, and Ruck all think the poet probably drew from northern European motifs that derive from Siberian or Arctic shamanic traditions. At the very least, Arthur wrote, Santa's sleigh and reindeer are probably references to various related northern European mythology. For example, the Norse god Thor, known in German as Donner, flew in a chariot drawn by two goats which have been replaced in the modern retelling of Santa's reindeer. Hmm? Wow. Reindeer which aren't usually known to fly, right? <laughs> Other historians are un unaware of a connection between Santa and shamans or magic mushrooms, including Stephen Nessenbaum, or was a Nissenbaum, who wrote a book about the origins of Christmas traditions, and Penn Ristet, Rested of the University of Texas at Austin, both of whom were contacted by Live Science. And this is where I'm getting this information from. It's the website called Live Science or Live Science. So just LiveScience.com. <clears throat> Santa, number, so this is number eight, the last one. Santa is from the Arctic. The Arctic. <laughs> I always say Arctic instead of Arctic. <laughs> One historian, Ronald Hutton, told NPR that the theory of a mushroom Santa connection is flawed. If you look at the evidence of Siberian shamanism, which I've done, Hutton said, you find that shamans didn't travel by sleigh, didn't usually deal the rain di with reindeer spirits, barely rarely took the mushrooms to get trances, don't have red and white clothes. How does this guy know? How does this Ronald Hutton know this? You know, did he hang out with Siberian shamans? I don't, I'm not saying I don't know if he did. Did he hang out with them? Did they? Did he watch how they practiced this uh, supposed event? Do, does he know for sure? I mean, that's the thing. You can be called a historian, but is that based on hearsay or is it based on actual seeing what happened? That's how to say about this guy. <laughs> <clears throat> And so, so, but Rush and Ruck disagree, saying shamans did deal with reindeer spirits, and the ingestion of mushrooms is well documented. Siberian shamans did wear red deer pelts, but the coloring of Santa's garb 
is mainly meant to mirror the coloring of Amanita mushrooms, Rush added. As for sleighs, the point isn't the exact mode of travel, but that the trip involves transportation to a different celestial realm. Sometimes people would also drink the urine of the shaman or the reindeer, as the hallucinogenic compounds are excreted this way, without some of the harmful chemicals present in the fungi, which is broken down by the shaman or the reindeer. People who know about shamanism accept this, his, this story. Is there any other reason that Santa lives in the North Pole? It, it is a tradition that can be traced back to Siberia. So, fascinating, right? Wouldn't you say? I'd say it's pretty, quite darn right fascinating. Because <clears throat> there's so many people get in a tizzy over this holiday season. This this season, this this day called Christmas, everybody's heart's pounding, everybody's face is breaking out with zits and stuff because they're stressed out, don't know if they're going to get it, get that right present. You know what I'm saying? That's why I can't really feel Christmas, really. I don't feel it. I feel winter solstice. I don't feel Christmas completely because I feel like a lot of these Hallmarky holidays have been, I mean, they've been... They're, at their original core, they were something else completely. They weren't as superficial, is what I'm getting at. And a lot of these holidays, Hallmark holidays, are based on pagan, pagan practices before all this stuff started. I mean, you can argue with me about this if you want. I don't care. I'm not into arguing about stuff like this. I've done my research. I've looked up books, and I've, and I've talked to people, too. So, um, and intuitively, I meditate on what it is that I learn. I don't fall for everything. So, I do my research, and I meditate on things, and I contact my higher self and see how she feels about it, too. Because <laughs> she is me, but just a higher level of understanding that I have within me. So, I'm going to share with you three books that I find very helpful with understanding the mu magic mushroom. It's, these aren't about Amanita specifically, these are more about psilocybin mushroom, which is a different type of mushroom that has been known to uh, create, well not create, I guess um, the people that experience it uh, seem to have something opened up in them that they've never uh, seen before, a perception that's unlike this third dimension that we're living in right now. I've never tried um, any type of psychedelic mushrooms. The only thing that people consider psychedelic that I've tried is cannabis. And uh, a cup of valerian tea a long time ago, which I told you about that experience. If you want me to repeat it, I will. So anyway, this book, The Food of the Gods, it was a very popular book by Terrence McKenna when it came out. It was kind of a late bloomer on Terrence McKenna. I didn't really find out about Terrence McKenna till like 2000 and... I'm going to say 2005 about is when I found out about this guy. And basically his books, they um, they talk about um, not just magic mushrooms, but they also talk about the effect that they can have on your perspective of life and what's going on in the world and what's really important. It just kind of reinforces it and helps you to see things that weren't as clear as they were before, even more so than, you know, cannabis not dog and cannabis, but that's what people are saying that their experiences has been with this uh, magical mushroom. Here's another book that I really like of Terrence McKenna, and it's called True Hallucinations. And if anybody out there is already on the mushroom journey, have tried magic mushrooms before, you'll probably have uh, seen this book. But it's just about him and his brother, uh, Dennis, traveling to the Amazon. And not only do they partake of magic mushrooms, they also partake of this thing called ayahuasca. So it's a really good um, book because it opens your eyes and lets you know that there's people all over the world, indigenous peoples, indigenous cultures, that partake of these hallucinogenic substances. But they do it in a responsible manner. It's not like they're partying and drinking lots of beers and, oh, let's have one of these mushrooms. No, they're doing it in more sacred um, <clears throat> grounded type of way where they're connecting and trying to heal and help 
themselves and each other. So that's what I love about um, these books uh, by Terrence McKenna. This one, The Archaic Revival, is an interview. It's just an interview with Terrence McKenna, and he's talking about his adventures, his psychedelic adventures. He's an ethnobi ethnobiologist, so he studies plants just in general. He's always been fascinated by plants. This is what he looks like here. <laughs> Friendly little face. But he's always been fascinated by plants. And some of his adventures are so uh, captivating for me to read about <coughs> and uh, find him on YouTube and uh, see his interviews. He's into a lot of the things that I've been just drawn towards, like extraterrestrials, the I Ching, things like that. And he talks about the mushroom and how the mushroom is like a helper. So, um, yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with partaking in uh, these hallucinogenic substances if you know what you're getting into. If you do your research, even with cannabis, cannabis is way more benign than these substances that I'm referring to, ayahuasca and magic mushrooms. Yet, it can be, it can be very profound if it's taken like in edible form. Um, I told you about the experience I had where I ate three cookies, cannabis cookies, and I saw fractals for quite a while. And some other things <laughs> that are kind of bizarre and different, but I didn't feel like I was going to die or anything like that. I think these substances are probably not for everybody, because some people can't handle the effect that it may have on you, on your body. Everybody is affected differently, that's for sure. Seems like this has made me like feel more chatty, lavender Kush. And um, I did read the in the review that it just gives you this peaceful like happiness. The happy meters way up. <laughs> and what's wrong with that? I don't mind feeling that way. It's nothing wrong with people feel guilty whenever they feel good. You know, they feel like they're not supposed to. F oh, I'm not supposed to feel this good. When I first partook in cannabis, that's how I felt. I was like. <clears throat> man, I feel really good. And then I felt bad because I'm walking out in the world and thinking, not everybody feels this good. Everybody should be allowed to feel this good if they want to. So, yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed today's show where I was talking about the magic mushroom and how it connects with Christmas and Santa Claus. Because um, it makes so much sense to me, at least. I don't know if anybody else agrees. But, you know, do your research. That's what it's all about. Find out more. If you hear something I'm talking about on the show and you're like, what's up with that? Look it up. Now, cannabis has helped me in broadening my horizons as far as uh, spiritual nature. Everybody's, oh, you don't need to take this substance to be spiritual. You don't need to take, uh, you know, this to be at a great, great art. I'm aware of all of that. What I'm aware of also is that I don't just partake in cannabis just for creative means. I partake in it. I have pain. All my knees and ankles with arthritis, I have PTSD, social anxiety, I have all kinds of other things that are going on with me. That cannabis alleviates. And some of these things, that, I mean, it alleviates these basic things that are going on with me and my body and my mind, but I'm finding more and more things that it's helping as well. So, <clears throat> no, I don't have to take cannabis or have cannabis every day. I choose to do so because I know it's a great supplement for me. I was reading this article about the whole cannabis being a gateway. Yeah, gateway, but not in the way you think. And it's really cool. It's this place, it's this website called uh, Green Flower Media. See, my memory even has gotten better with cannabis. <laughs> need some
tea after that cough session. <laughs> oh my god. Lavender Kush. A plus. So yeah. Thank you so much for joining me today on the show talking about Santa Claus and uh, how it correlates to the magic mushroom and Christmas in general. Um, these are my viewpoints, my perception of the world. And as I partake in more cannabis, I see more